they definitely just have us here. Uh, that sucks. That was a bad start. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. We are going to be jumping into a bit of a silly version of the adventure deck, but before that I just want to remind you, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We do uh, giveaways and all that kind of stuff here on It Resolves, uh, and so the way you can enter those is by subscribing. It's also just a great way to support the channel, uh, so please do feel free to do that. But let's jump into it, guys. Let's talk about this deck. So. This is a venture deck. Uh, Orzhov Ventures is very popular right now. I believe it was played last week in the championship and all kinds of stuff. But uh, this is the teleportation circle version of the deck. Uh, and not to mention, it's a bit of an older version that we've kind of tooled up a little bit. So we'll kind of talk about this a little bit. But the idea in general uh, is to use teleportation circle with things like Nadir, Selfless Paladin, uh, which when it enters the battlefield, you get to venture or use it with things like Elder Fang Disciple or Elite Spellbinder to kind of pick apart uh, the opponent's hand as much as possible. All of which is very, very good. Uh, we also do have Priest of Ancient Lore. When it enters the battlefield, you gain a life and draw a card. So we've got a card draw mechanic. We even have Thieves Tools, which you can bounce with the circle to create treasure tokens. So you can actually ramp in this deck. Uh, and then theoretically in some combination of that Priest of Ancient Lore and Nadir, uh, kind of just ramp into more and more ventures and more and more uh, things that you can play drawing off of that ancient lore. So it's an interesting deck. Um, I'm very excited to try this one out in practice. Uh, it's done really well. Um, and I think it's actually tooled fairly well for the meta right now. The only thing I would say is sweepers are obviously a problem. One thing we do have though is uh, Barrowin uh, of Clan Undur. And this actually allows you to bring stuff back. Uh, that are three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield as long as you've completed a dungeon which hopefully we'll be able to do this it does have the arch lich in here as well uh, and so we do have incentive to do the tome of annihilation first uh, for the most part we'll obviously kind of venture into certain dungeons based upon what decks we find ourselves against uh, in practice again I did find myself against like a mono red list where Tome of Annihilation isn't exactly what you want to do. Uh, ideally, you want to be gaining some life, protecting your life total, those kinds of things. Uh, what I will say is this doubles up pretty quickly. Um, so what I mean by that is you can generally get to a, p a position where you're playing at least two spells a turn. Uh, and so if we, we are not against a sweeper deck, uh, generally we'll have an okay time of it. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect by any means, but we're going to do the best we can to hopefully get some wins with this one and just have some fun. Uh, we do have the um, one of the cards that I added is Poet's Quill here. Uh, what this allows us to do is a couple things. One, power up a creature, give it lifelink, which is very helpful in those aggro matchups where we know we're going to have a big life loss. We need to be able to gain some of that life back. But additionally, uh, it allows us to do the uh, lesson sideboard and give us a little bit more tech if we need it. Uh, so maybe we need a necrotic fumes to get rid of something. Maybe we just need a creature. So we've got the summoning here. Uh, introduction to annihilation uh, gets rid of stuff. Environmental sciences smooths out mana. And then of course the mascot exhibition uh, for an extra finisher in the deck. But all in all, I'm actually really excited to try this. Uh, while we don't necessarily have any really new cards in this deck, um, I do think it's actually kind of positioned okay in the meta, at least in best of one. And so uh, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to try this out, see where it works, see where it doesn't, um, and uh, hopefully have some fun along the way. So let's jump right in, guys. Let's see how this one does. Uh, hopefully we can get some wins with it. We'll see. And uh, yeah, let's do it right now. Go. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. This is actually an interesting hand, very discard heavy, uh, but I actually think I like that. So we're going to go for it. Uh, and see how this one goes. Now, worth noting in these, uh, in the order here, really matters. So, Elder Fang Disciple is the one you want to play first, and then the Acquisitions Expert, because it does allow you to get uh, Cleric as well as Rogue out on the battlefield. So, you're going to see two cards with that Acquisitions Expert. Um, worth noting, though, we may find ourselves wanting to play the Arch Lich. Uh, we'll see. 
or arc lich, whatever you want to call it. Um, but we'll see as we go along. Looks like an evolving wilds into a snow covered forest, so I am expecting potentially mono green landfall. Uh, looks like werewolves perhaps instead, which is terrifying. Um, but we'll see what we can do. We do have the flunk, uh, so getting cards out of hand actually really helps with this flunk, uh, long term. So we'll see how this goes. All right, uh, if you have another wolf or werewolf, put a 1-1 one, one count on it. Okay. So let's do this first. Let's see what they do. Uh, they may try and block. Uh, looks like they're not going to. So I'm going to let that happen. I think we're going to go ahead and Acquisitions Expert here. Um, I would like to flunk this, but I think we're going to wait. Uh, chances are this is going to get a counter on it, of course, but uh, I think it's okay. I think I'd rather make sure that we're getting a card out of hand here. With the double Acquisitions Expert in particular, like, we got a lot we can get rid of here. Uh, so I'm feeling okay about that. Um... I think it's just the Blizzard Brawl. Both of those play a very similar role uh, of just basic removal. Uh, but what this does that Frostbite doesn't do, um, while it is a sorcery, it does grant indestructible, and we do have instant speed removal. And so uh, I, I would like to uh, hopefully be able to kill something here. Uh, I'm not going to block. Going to take the two. I know they draw a card off of this, but uh, I think that's okay. Unfortunate that that's the land we drew. Um... So seven minus four is oftentimes three. Uh, and so we can just straight flunk that, uh, which might be the call. Alternatively, what can we do? Not a lot. Um, yeah, I think we just go ahead and flunk that uh, and then leave these up as a double block. Um, not super stoked on this play, I'll be honest, but I don't really know that we've... Oh, wow, they, we uh, definitely are just going to get hit again here then. Uh, okay. With that in mind, I think we will block uh, on that end. There's a teleportation circle, which actually isn't too bad here. Um, the only trick is... Hmm. So what we could do is Poet's Quill, get the Learn Trigger, go get an Environmental Sciences, uh, and then play the Black Source off of it. Uh, which doesn't seem terrible, but the reality is we're not really going to be able to do that much. Alternatively, we can take the turn to just drop the teleportation circle. Nah, you know what? I am going to go for the Poet's Quill. Uh, not a super exciting play, I grant you, but uh, I do think it's quite necessary. We do need a second Black Source here, uh, and so this is really about the best we can do. Let's go ahead and drop that now, and we will just pass. Uh, facing down quite a bit of damage this turn. Uh, and that's not ideal for us. But again, that Poet's Quill does allow us to lifelink a little bit if need be. So chances are they can just Frostbite here and get rid of this. Ooh, that actually gets rid of this as well. Fair enough. Uh, I think we maybe just are not quick enough for the Werewolf deck, which is pretty, pretty standard, I would suggest. <laughs> that doesn't seem very surprising to me. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, not great. They're going to draw two cards. Um, which does make our acquisitions expert quite a bit worse. Would love any amount of removal here. Uh, Flunk would be great. We can get that Tovalar out of there. There's another Black Source, which is, I mean, a little late, but that's fine. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to acquisitions expert. Um, so they do have a mana left open that they can sack the Liberator for. Um, so I'm actually kind of curious to see how they go about doing this. Uh, let's get Forest out of hand. It's not great, but it's something. Yeah, I think we need to start. I mean, we got to do something here, but I think we're just kind of dead. I think they just have us. Um, we don't have enough to really take advantage of what they're doing here, and so uh, I'm assuming we're going to be in a pretty bad spot. Uh, now, again, we do have to keep in mind what we're needing to do here, and it might just be the Lost Mine that we have to do. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. We'll scry one, see what we get. Um, 
land is not at all what we want so let's go ahead and throw that back and hope for the best <laughs> uh curious to see if they sack the the liberator here for the poet's quill they really don't have to they can wait um and it looks like they will and they're yeah so they just get to kill it on attacks here um hmm i'm thinking we're dead right like we might just have to uh call this one um wow yeah i'm gonna go ahead and concede here guys they definitely just have us here uh that sucks that was a bad start that was a really bad start all right let's jump into game two all right guys here we are for game number two let's see if we can do a little better this time uh again heavy on the acquisitions experts but we do have the flunk so if we find ourselves against a creature deck uh we should be able to take care of it um ooh, that's not bad so triumphant adventure is a really annoying card for anybody against it because if you can't remove it it just sits there and is like a free attacker basically every turn that death touch and first strike makes it so tricky it's conditional first strike i know but so annoying to deal with um so i'm very interested to see what the opponent might have here but uh that might be as a, a big help for us here i'm not gonna flunk the eye witch anytime soon it's not really what we need to be doing um hopefully they only really have vanishing verses although looks like that may not be the case um I think I'm an acquisitions expert here uh just to just to get a, a little bit of information out of the hand here this may not be much but it's something we do we do really want to get them with no cards in hand basically if we can uh so they do have a hive of the eye tyrant uh, as their their land drop for turn three which is good for us because again it comes into play tap so at the very worst we may have just kept them off of a turn three play uh I know that doesn't sound amazing but it is better than, uh, I think, just playing the Triumphant Adventure here. We'll see. I could be wrong. Um, for Adventure deck, we haven't done much adventuring, I know. But uh, we'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, and I'm curious to see how this actually plays out. Because, again, they do have... Interesting. So they can take out the Thieves' Tools or the Flunk. My assumption would be the Thieves' Tools is the bigger card to get rid of. Um... But that's just my opinion. I, I could be wrong. Uh, they, I think, will have a Doom Scar or something along those lines. Um, hmm. So both of these play the same. Like, literally the exact same. Um, so I think we're going to attack first. Uh... And I actually do think we go with the Elder Fang Disciple. So here's the deal. Again, I'm expecting that they have got Doom Scars. Uh, so I'm just trying to get stuff out of the hand and get them to a place where they only have a Doom Scar. They pull the trigger on it, but then they don't have anything to follow it up. Uh, is kind of what I'm hoping for here. Now, we may not get there. I don't know, but that's what we're shooting for. So we're going to play the other Acquisitions Expert and see what they've got here. Uh, obviously getting that last card out of hand. So now they are in top deck mode, uh, which is great for us. We just get a land. That's fine. Um, and I think we'll just attack in here for two. Now the question is, do we play the triumphant adventure or do we just hold up flunk for basically anything they could have, which may not, not may not be anything. Um, I actually think I do just hold this up. Um, if they draw a land off the top, they can activate the Hive, which we can just kill. Uh, I fully expect that they might Doomscar this turn. No, they don't. Okay. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, well, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, so, we've got two of these. So, if they do use the uh, Doomscar here, it's kind of okay with me. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, we're gonna get through I think the Tome of Annihilation as best we can. I think we do attack in here as much as they're clearly just gonna block like the Disciple or something. That's an odd one. Okay. So it didn't matter what they blocked there, essentially. Uh, which makes sense, but uh, again, now they can freely Doomscar if they have it. They've got a Snarl here. We don't get to leave up the flunk. 
They're really making me think they don't have Doomscar, which is a tricky thing, because I still think they probably do. No? Okay, yeah. I was about to say, <laughs> there's like no way they don't have it. Uh, ooh. So I think the play is this. Uh, we're gonna venture into the dungeon. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna decline and just take the two. They probably will do the same, yeah. Um, but now, if they don't have a way to kill this, we actually just get to teleportation circle on it, if we'd like, uh, which is pretty good. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so I think I do flunk one of these. Uh, they do get a counter on that, I know, but then we get to do this, which is going to get a card from our... Oh, no, 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 excuse me. If we've completed a dungeon. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and then I'm just going to play this out. And at this point, we're just hoping they don't have another Doomscar, really. If they do, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. They should probably activate the Hive of the Eye Tyrant and start exiling stuff, if I had to guess. Uh, but I think they're just searching for that sweeper opportunity, and it looks like they found it. Fair enough. Uh, very annoying for sure, but we are actually pretty close to just finishing the dungeon anyway. Um, yeah, I think I just throw this out. So this bounces back. Uh, and we decline. So we lose two life here. They will probably do the same, although they can just sack the Eye Witch if they want. It's kind of a freebie, uh, given that it replaces itself. Um, looks like they're just gonna keep zeroing that Loth, which is interesting. So here's that that Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Again, fully expected this. Uh, and I assume they take out an adventure, maybe? A triumphant adventure, or... Okay, they're gonna take out one of those, that's fine. Land is helpful, but it is a tapped land, which is really unfortunate. Um, I wish it wasn't. I really wish it wasn't. All right, so let's do this. Uh, this does finish the dungeon, which is helpful. Uh, so next time we play this, we get to keep it, which next turn we get to throw that plus acquisitions expert down. Uh, and crucially, uh, this actually does count as part of the party mechanics. So we should be able to at least get a a reasonable card out of hand here as well. So they do hit for one. Looks like they're gonna leave up their lands potentially. Ah, Meat Hook, okay. Meat Hook is super good, but uh, we'll see. Okay, yeah, that's really good. Land is kind of helpful here. Um, all right, so we definitely do this definitely do this i assume they're not gonna show us the mascot exhibition <laughs> um but we'll see they did oh and it's meat hook massacre too Ugh. um i think we take the meat hook hoping they don't have another one I think they just play mascot exhibition here, but we can't really allow them to have the, uh, oh no. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. And they get to spit out the tokens. That sucks. And those tokens have reach, which really sucks. Okay. So we're pretty dead here. I think, uh, the bright side is we do get the mascot exhibition out of hand. <laughs> it's about the only bright side to all of this. Um, so that is going to go away. Um, and now we just have to hope for the best. <laughs> but yeah, I think they definitely have us here. They can fire up any of these man lands. They can also draw quite a number of cards this turn. Yeah, I think they just uh, clearly have us here. Sure. Dang. 
They just, again, sweepers, guys. As we mentioned in the deck tech, sweepers are always going to be the problem here. And unfortunately, we can't do much about that. Um, yeah, good game by the opponent. These have menace, so we can't block them. Well done. I mean, hey, they got us fair and square. Let's jump into a game three. Maybe we can still get a win. Let's hope for the best. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's hope for a little bit of a better run. Uh, again, we haven't been doing super well with this, but we'll give this this hand a shot. We have the Disciple and the Triumphant Adventure, which is, uh, I think, both quite good. I think what we need to end up doing is playing the Adventures early. Um, they're obviously better on the aggressive side of things, and they do kind of eat either a removal spell or something like that, so we can keep stuff later on. We'll see, but I do think that's probably going to be the play, uh, depending on what we draw here. Um, it is a little bad, though, I guess, against the Shambling Gas, so that might be something to consider. Um, we do get a, a spur on with the Adventure, but that's about it. Um, with that in mind, I think I just do this. We just need to get, I think, cards back out of hand here. And I think that's a bit of a paradox with this deck, or at least a tension point with the deck, is that it just simply tries to do a couple of different things. And I think that's kind of the problem, is it just doesn't deal with both of them well. Um, I think we do block uh, solely because we, we do want to get these off the board before we drop the adventure, I think. Um, and then here they can just Rotten Reunion if they would like and exile a card from the graveyard. No, instead they've got a Witch, which is very good. Um, cool. That's a much better play. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, actually, let's scry one. Let's try something a bit different here. Um... I don't hate that, especially with the teleportation circle. I think we can keep. Uh, we do want to just finish a venture uh, so we can get this thing going too, I believe. So we'll see how this ends up shaking out, but uh, I do think that's pretty important for us. Uh, obviously can't block this. It does have menace, so they're just going to hit for three. Um, annoying, not the end of the world. Uh, Let's first attack in. Uh, I think we'll create a treasure token solely because the Shambling Gas is going to kill the 1-1 one -one regardless of what we do, so that's not really a great play uh, in my opinion. And ramping here is actually pretty relevant. If we can get to 6 mana, we can do a 4 mana and a 2 mana thing in the single in a single turn. Um, Alright, so they're going to exile Elder Fang Disciple. Create some stuff. Makes total sense. So now I assume they're going to double block. Um, yes, looks like that is going to be the case. Cool. Uh, but again, on the bright side, they won't have that shambling gas that we have to worry about quite as much. And I think that that's pretty relevant. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to drop this. So we draw a card. Nice. And let's go ahead and drop that too. Despite really wanting to get that adventurer down, they've only got three cards in hand. And next turn we can teleportation circle to start getting the rest of them out of there. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm very heavy on the discard end of things and I don't know that that's 100% correct. It's just the way that I'm really enjoying the deck. Uh, and so that's kind of how I keep playing it. I, that could be 100% incorrect guys, but it's just my, my way of doing it. Okay. Yep. Annoying, not the end of the world. Uh, yes. So that's just gonna die and then we take three. All right. Um, oh, it's Quill, huh? I think we do this. I think we'll just do that that's fine um not super exciting but it's something and i actually think we don't attack here um i'm debating on if we double block if given the opportunity but i don't know that we do because we don't really want to lose this 
We have two cards available. They're going to deadly dispute. Okay, so now they've got more cards available. Um, but that's kind of why I didn't want to block or uh, attack with the Elder Fang Disciple, because they can just block it and kill it. <laughs> so let's do that. I'm going to drop the circle. Finding a good time to play the circle is very difficult, I am finding. Um, not impossible, just very difficult. Uh, not going to attack here, and we are going to try and go ahead and complete a dungeon. If they've got a kill spell... Okay, good. They didn't. That would have sucked really bad. <laughs> uh, all right. So, we did complete a dungeon. We also draw a card here, which is great. Um... Maybe they do have a kill spell. They've got three mana available. It could be another uh, Soul Shatter if they've got it. Alternatively, it could be Infernal Grasp. It could be just about anything. All right, land is helpful-ish. Kind of have enough land, but that's fine. All right, there is a nice little combo with the, uh, the Witch here to draw some cards and do a bunch of stuff. Very good. Honestly, second circle would not go amiss here. <laughs> Alright, there's Onyx. Uh, I assume that's going to get rid of... Yeah. Makes sense. Very scary card. They're going to attack in with the Witch. Getting us down to three. Alright. Um... it might just be introduction to annihilation I think that's the play um, they draw a card I know but uh, I think that's just our best option we could have second learn but maybe that would have been better but I'm just gonna get a card out of hand I think they just kill us right like pretty quickly here they've got high of the eye tyrants so nope cool <laughs> all right well that's really terrible for us uh i can't they had two onyxes in like three cards that's insane all right so they did get rid of a soul shatter here uh yeah i'm not gonna block um cool This is a silly place to be, but we're going to do it. All right, let's do this. <laughs> let's learn again. Um, question is what? Um, God, it might have to be that. That's such a crappy thing to have to do. Uh, okay. Like we're dead regardless though, I think. They do have two mana available. They can probably kill this. Man, seriously. They just have everything. Uh, yeah. Dang. We just can't win. We didn't do it. We have to concede we lost. Oh no. All right. Well, that was really bad. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So unfortunately, we didn't get a single win with this deck. Now, let me just clarify uh, one thing really quick, because we didn't really mention this in the very beginning. I did mention there are like multiple venture decks. Uh, usually Orzhov is like the go-to. Um, however, not every single one has the teleportation circle. And I think we did a really good job of demonstrating why. Uh, I think there were multiple turns where we had the circle in hand, but it didn't feel like it did enough to be able to play it. Now, maybe that was just bad sequencing on my end, and feel free to let me know in the comment section, because I know I could have played this smoother. Um, however, I don't love the circle being in the deck. As cool as it is, as janky and silly as it is, 
I just don't think it's good enough. I think there are so many other good plays that you can have in these kinds of lists that you really have to focus more on the, the powerhouse cards that are kind of good on their own. Uh, and I do think we ran up against just a lot of sweeper heavy decks. And in one case, obviously just a more aggressive deck that was able to deploy powerful threats that we can't deal with. So all that to say, um, I also think playing the adventures would have been a much better uh, turn one play for a lot of situations. Having death touch is so important. Uh, and I kind of regret doing that. However, I would say in a lot of scenarios, um, they had removal spells or something that could have dealt with it. We knew in the first game they had Frostbite, Blizzard Brawl. Uh, in the second game, we expected Doomscar, which is why I didn't play it. And then in the third game, uh, they didn't. we didn't necessarily know they had Meat Hook Massacre, but it was fairly evident, I think, from the, the deck list. And so, I don't know, guys. Uh, to me, it just didn't feel all that powerful. I do think this deck, uh, in general, like the optimized version of the deck, uh, is probably better in traditional standard, not best of one. Um, and so I do think that has something to do with it here. But regardless, guys, it's still a fun deck. I love the Venture deck. It's always a good time. I just wish we had had a bit of a better showing this time. Unfortunately, we didn't. But guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this regardless of our no win uh, uh, record here. But it was still a good time hanging out with you guys and hopefully having a good start to your week. So guys, thank you so much. I love you all very much. I'll see you again very soon.